In this video, we're going to go over sensory, working, short-term, and long-term memory. These terms are often confused by a lot of students. And one of the reasons why is because in some sources of text, some of these terms are used interchangeably, but each of these terms are separate. So we're going to go through them one by one. First, we have sensory memory. Sensory memory is the storage of sensory information after sensory perception for a very short period of time. And as you can see, sensory memory only lasts on the order of milliseconds to a few seconds. So it really is very short lasting. There are several types of sensory memory. There is iconic memory for visual sensory information, echoic memory for auditory sensory information, and haptic memory for touch sensory information. And the amount of time that each of these types of sensory memories can be stored is different. So for example, iconic memory is shorter lasting than echoic memory. Next, we have working memory. Working memory is the cognitive system for holding and processing a limited amount of information. So examples include basic arithmetic calculations. So if you're trying to do 14 times seven, or if you're trying to give directions to your home or directions to your work, or if you're trying to decide what to order at a restaurant, all of these situations are examples of working memory. Now, the most famous model of working memory is Baddeley's model. And under Baddeley's model, there are four components of working memory, a central executive, the episodic buffer, the visuospatial sketchpad, and the phonological loop. Next, we have short-term memory. Short-term memory is the cognitive system for holding but not manipulating a limited number of chunks of information for a period of seconds. Now, a couple things. First of all, to distinguish working memory from short-term memory, working memory, you are holding and processing information. Short-term memory, you're only holding the information. You're not manipulating the information. Other point, this can be used to hold memory for a period of seconds without active maintenance processes like rehearsal. So for instance, if someone tells you a few numbers to memorize, if you repeat the numbers over and over in your head, they can hold these numbers much longer than if someone just tells you the numbers and you don't try to mentally retain that information. Now, the amount of information or the number of chunks of information that can be held is a bit controversial. So a lot of people go by a number seven plus or minus two. And this is based on a very old study in the past that was not meant to give a precise number, nor did it have a lot of evidence to back up this number. So while this number seven plus or minus two is still used and thrown around, the more a precise number would be four plus or minus one. So there's a more recent study that has actually given more evidence that four plus or minus one is more accurate. One thing I want to note though is that this doesn't mean that you can only hold and store four plus or minus one numbers at a time. When you're memorizing a phone number, for instance, it's possible for you to hold more digits if you break them into chunks, all right? So for instance, Usually when we think of a phone number, you have the area code, then you have three digits, and then you have four digits. Instead of thinking that of that as 10 separate digits, if you break that into three chunks, so a chunk of three, three, and four digits, then you can hold all of that, but only as three chunks of information. So then you can even hold a fourth chunk or possibly a fifth chunk of information. But the key thing with short-term memory is this is for holding information but not manipulating it. So finally, we have long-term memory. Long-term memory is the storage of an unlimited amount of information for an indefinite period of time. So this is information that you would want to store in your brain and just be able to recall it at any point in time. And this includes both explicit and implicit memories. And in another video, we'll describe what explicit and implicit memories are, but in general, long-term memory is exactly what it sounds like. This is information that is stored for essentially forever. All right, so these are the four types of memory. 
sensory, working, short-term, and long-term memory. Thank <laughs> you.